this function, and so for this function right here, y equals 5x minus 3, we're going to use values greater than or equal to negative 1. Now students, this is a linear. You should recognize this right away as a linear function. You really should. Okay, by now, you should look at that and realize it's a linear function. So we're just going to put three points up here. That'll give us a straight line. So we're going to start at negative 1, and we're going to go greater than negative 1, so 0 and 1. So negative 8, and then negative 3, and then we should get out a 2. Okay, all right, now our other function is this. <coughs>
going through the y-axis at 5, okay? Now, it's going to be cut off. It's going to run, it's going to run from, I'm going to use interval notation, it's going to run from negative 2 to 0. And that's it, inclusive. We'll come back to that later. Now, my other function is y equals 8x minus 5, okay? Now, that's going to be a linear graph, obviously, so three points will be sufficient. And x is greater than 0, so I'm going to put a 0 here, but circle it, and make a note to myself. There'll be a hole in the graph there. And then we're getting greater than 0, so 1, and then 2. Put a 0 in, you get negative 5. Put a 1 in, you get a 3. Um, and then put a 2 in, and you will get a, let's see, an 11. All right, so there's all the information I really need to graph this thing. So I'm going to pull this up here and get it out of the way. Now, on my x-axis, my smallest x value is negative 6, and my largest x is 2. So really, that's not a big deal. Your, your x-axis will range from negative 6 to 2. That's pretty standard. Your y-axis, I'm not going to go all the way to 23. I'm going to go to 14. I think that'll be sufficient. We know this is going to be a parabola-shaped graph, so my y-axis is going to run from negative 14 to negative, or to, I'm sorry, my y-axis will run from positive 14 to my smallest y value is negative 5, so a pretty big y-axis again, so I'm going to slide this up here, or at least I'm going to try to. I did not want to do that. Let's try this again. So it goes all the way up to positive 14. All the way down, we'll go to negative 5 will be sufficient. Now your x-axis, I think we said it has to go from negative 6 to maybe 2 or something. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, here we go, students. Let's start off with this part right here. Um, I'm going to color code these. I'm going to do this one in black. So here we go. Negative 2, 2. So negative 2, positive 2, there'll be a hole there. And then negative 3, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then negative 3 would be way up here. Or negative 4 would be way up here. So it looks like it's hitting here and it's curving. And it's going upward like this, okay? Not a very good graph, but you get the idea. Notice I started here, because that's my first point on my table of values. I did not continue and put an arrow, okay? Do not do that. Okay, let's use red on this one right here. This is linear, okay? So we're going to go from, let's see, uh, 0, negative 5 right here. There'll be a hole in the graph right there to 1, 3. So. So 14, 13, 12, 11, about right here. And you put your point on your first value, your first ordered pair. And you draw, wow, this is going to be really hard to do. Okay, that's a decently straight line, good enough. And it continues upward, okay? Now, this last one here we're going to do in green. Now it's going to be a horizontal line going through 5, so 1, 2, 3. So we know it's going to be a horizontal line going through 5 right here. And that's a really beautiful horizontal line. Okay, there's my horizontal line going through 5. Got it. Now, notice though, it runs from negative 2. And it is inclusive. Okay, if we pull this back up real quick, guys, look. If we pull this back up and looked at this one right here, x is greater than negative 2, and it's also greater, x is equal to negative 2, it's also equal to 0, too. Okay, so 
it is inclusive. So the graph is going to run from negative 2 to 0. So you understand, students, the rest of this line I do not need. It should be gone, okay? It's going to be hard to do without losing part of my black graph, but hopefully you understand what I'm trying to do, okay? That's it, guys. That's it. That's perfect. That's exactly what it should look like, okay? And so, you know, hopefully this makes sense, guys. It's a horizontal line, but it's only defined between negative 2 and 0. So negative 2 to 0, and that's it. All right. Okay, moving on to the next one for numbers 33 through 36. We're going to determine whether the function is even, odd, or neither. I'm going to go pretty fast on these to determine if it's even. Everywhere there's an x, you put a negative x. Then you simplify. Well, a negative uh, x to the fifth power is going to be a negative x to the fifth, because negative times negative times negative times negative times negative is negative, and then four times negative x is negative four x, and then minus seven. Got it? Let's review. Everywhere there's an x, you put a negative x. Then you get y by itself. Well, y is already by itself. Then you look. Does this function here match exactly this function here? No, it does not. So this function does, is not even. It is not even. Now let's see if it's um, odd. Now with odd, watch what you do, please. Everywhere there's an x, you put a negative x. However, everywhere there's a y, you put a negative y. Got it? So then I simplify this right side, which I already did. And then notice here I have a negative y. Okay, everywhere there's an x, I put a negative x, and I simplify it. Everywhere there's a y, I put a negative y, then I simplify it. Next, get y by itself. Well, y has a negative sign, so go through and divide everything by negative 1. Or you can go through and just change all the signs. That's the exact same thing. Now, is this function here exactly like this one here? No, the 7 is negative, 7 is positive, so this function is neither even or odd. And by the way, don't forget what even and odd are. An even function is symmetric to the x-axis or y-axis, excuse me. And an odd function is symmetric to the origin. Okay. All right, number 34. Here we go. y equals, put a negative x for x, minus 20, put a negative x for x. Now, um, let's go ahead and simplify. You have <coughs> Negative x to the fourth power, that's going to come out to be a positive. Minus 20 times a negative x squared, it's going to come out to be a positive x. So a negative 20 times x is going to give you negative 20x. Next, get y by itself. I did that. Is this identical to this? Yes, it is, definitely. So I know for sure the function is even. Now, can a function ever be even and odd both? Yes, 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 it can. So we got to check for odd also. So in order to check for odd, remember, students, we're going to put a negative. We're going to put a negative x in for x. We're also going to put a negative y in for y. Okay. So you simplify the right side, you get this. Simplify the left side, you get this. So bring down your negative y. Here's what you get. Now get y by itself. So y equals negative x to the fourth plus 20x. Does this match identically to this function here? No, it does not. So it is not odd. It is even only. Okay, here we go for this one. Everywhere there's an x, we're going to substitute negative x. We're going to check for even function. Okay, let's simplify. y equals 2 times negative x is negative 2x. Negative x squared would be x squared plus 3. Next, get y by itself. Well, it is. Does this function here match exactly your original function? No, it does not. So we know it that the function is not even. Now, let's check for odd symmetry or an odd function. Everywhere there's an x, you put a negative x. Everywhere there's a y, you put a negative y. Got it. Now, we simplify the right.
right side and we get this. We simplify the left side and we get this. Now divide everything by a negative one. Please, please be careful and listen to me. This becomes positive and a lot of students want to do this. They want to make this positive. Then they want to go in here and make this negative. And this negative, that is wrong. And I'm going to explain why this is all one term. They're being multiplied right here and this square root pulls all of these together into one term also. This is one term, so you do only change the sign of the sign outside here. So this is negative becomes positive, this is negative becomes positive. All of this stays the same on the inside. So does this match exactly with this? Yes it does. This function is odd. Okay, moving on to number 36. Um, everywhere there is a X, I'm going to put a, we'll check for even. Everywhere there's an X, I'm going to put a negative X. Okay, now, let's simplify this. Make it a positive X squared times 6 would be 6X squared. Okay, well that's it. It comes out to be exactly right. It's even. Okay, now let's check for odd real quick. Um, everywhere there's an X, we'll put a negative X. Everywhere there's a Y, we'll put a negative Y. Simplify this and you'll get this. Simplify this and you have a negative Y. Now go through and change your signs so Y becomes positive. Remember, you do not change. This is all one term. So you put the negative on the outside here. And that's all that you do. You do not go on the inside and put any negative signs here like this. You do not do that. We talked about that in the last problem right here. We changed the sign on the outside, nothing on the inside. So is this equation identical to this one here? Absolutely not. So this function is even, not odd. Okay. All right, numbers 37 through, 30, through 40. We're going to identify the common function and describe the transformation. Well, first of all, guys, the common function for this, and you should know this, this would be a very good question on a test, would be y equals x cubed. Now, it's not been flipped. The original graph looks like this, okay? So this graph has not been flipped or rotated around the x or y axis, but it has been shifted. It's been shifted over 4 and up 4. So here's the original, and here's what the new one is. You would have x plus 4 because it was a shift to the left. So you use the opposite sign, and it goes directly to the x. It had a vertical shift going upward of 4, so you put a plus 4 here, and that's it. You gotta memorize these guys. You gotta know this stuff. Number 38, okay? This would be a y equals x squared, okay? Now, the original problem looks like this, okay? So obviously it's been flipped or rotated in the x axis, okay? So we know we're gonna have to apply a negative sign, not directly to the x, okay? If it was directly to the x, it would look like this. And that would be a flip around the y-axis, or rotate in the y-axis. You've got to memorize these. Whenever it's a rotation in the x-axis, it is a sign being um, added not directly to the x, but to the function. Now, we have a shift to the left, 3. We do not have a vertical or horizontal. We do not have a vertical shift up or down, just a shift to the left. And that would be it right there. Okay, so um, it's a shift to the left, use the opposite sign, and that's it guys, negative sign on the outside, if it was applied directly to the X, it'd be on the inside right here, okay, but it's not, so rotate it around the, um, rotate it in the X axis, okay, number 39, the original function would have been this right here, so there's your original function, absolute value of X, and it looks like this, so it has been flipped. It has been flipped and rotated in the x-axis, so we know we're going to put a negative sign not directly to the x. We know it's been shifted over to the left, okay? So it's going to be a positive 2 on the inside. And then we know it's been shifted up, positive 1, okay? So we're going to put a positive 1 right here, okay? There we go. Over to the left, positive 1, rotated in the x-axis, so a negative sign, not directly to the x. All right, number 40. Okay, the original problem would have been this right here. 
that's the original function and it looks like this the original function starts here and goes like this okay so notice it has been flipped it's been rotated in the y-axis so we are going to apply a negative sign directly to the x like this okay and then um, notice it's been moved down one and over to the right down one and over to the right it's been over to the right too so i'm going to put a negative two when you move to the right it's the opposite sign and then down one so a negative one right there okay and that would be the correct answer all right moving on to numbers 41 through 46 identify the transformation and sketch the graph guys i'm not going to make you sketch these graphs at all i just want you to tell me what happened okay so we have x squared minus nine now if that negative nine was added directly to the x it would have looked like this and that's not what it looks like this is a vertical shift a vertical a vertical shift and it's going down nine so just put down nine units so you got to put okay number 42 Okay, notice this negative 7 is being subtracted directly to the x under the radical. That's a horizontal shift. It's a negative 7. So you would say, right, it's been shifted right, 7 units. That's all you got to put, students. That easy. Okay, I'm not worried about the graph number 43. Okay, now we have a 3 being added directly to the x. It's a positive 3. That's a left movement, opposite sign. So left, 3 units. Okay, and a negative five, so we're gonna put down five units. That's it, students, that's it. Okay, moving on to number 44. Um, we have a negative three right here. So we're gonna say we have a shift to the left, opposite sign for horizontal shifts, left three units, okay? And up one unit, and then we have a negative sign right here. Okay, and notice that it's not being applied directly to the X. If it was, it would be on the inside. Now you should have great notes on this, guys. Whenever the negative sign is not being applied directly to the X, that is a rotation in the X axis or a reflection in the X axis. So um, we're going to say reflected or rotated in the X axis. Okay. All right. If the negative sign was here, it'd be reflected or rotated in the y-axis. Okay, number 45, here we go. Okay, notice we have um, a positive one being added directly to the x. That's going to be opposite sign, left, one unit. Then we have a positive nine being added to the entire function. That's going to go up nine units. Because of the s, units with an s, anyways. And then a negative sign being applied, not directly to the x, but the outside here to the function. That's going to be, once again, a um, reflection in the x-axis like the last one. So reflection or rotation in the x-axis. Okay, students. All right, moving on to number 46. Um, well, guys, there's really nothing here except the negative sign. Okay. And so, um, uh, we know that it's going to be reflected. It's not being, notice it's not being applied directly to the X, okay? If it was, it would look like this, by the way. You would have a one-third parentheses negative, no, I'm sorry, it would be like this. It would be, the negative one-third would be on the inside like this. And then cubed, that would be a negative one-third applied directly to the X, but it's not. It's on the outside. So um, what we have is um, a negative sign that's not being applied directly to the X. So we know it's going to be a reflection in the X-axis. Okay, so we can write that down. Reflection X axis and then notice it's being multiplied by a one-third now the one-third is not being multiplied directly to the x again if it was it would look like this you would have the negative one-third on the inside like this and the cubed the power on the outside that's being a one-third being multiplied directly to the x do you see that okay so this is not being multiplied directly to the x so if you'll look at your notes you will see that whenever it's not being um 
applied directly to the X is going to be a vertical. Now listen carefully. Look at your notes. You'll see this. It's a vertical shrink or stretch. Okay? It's going to be vertical. The question is, is it going to be a shrink or a stretch? Well, if you'll look at your notes, um, it's going to be a shrink, and here's why. We talked about this. Look at your notes, okay? It's going to be a vertical shrink. Remember, guys, when you're dealing with vertical stuff, students, when you're dealing with vertical stuff, um, remember, here's how you know whether it's a shift or a stretch. When you're dealing with vertical um, stretches or shifts, you're going to have a, or excuse me, stretches or shrinks. You're going to have a shrink when the number that you're using to multiply, in this case one third, is what do we say? Greater than negative one, less than one. Okay. You're going to have a stretch if your x is less than negative one or greater than one, okay? And one-third falls in this uh, range right here, okay? All right, guys, that's it. I hope these two review sheet videos have been helped to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.